Hey, good afternoon. I'm Mark here from JTEC again, and I'm here today to kind of give you a basic layout of a relay that we're using um, with that most cars use. They're called ISO relays, which is uh, industry standard relay. That's pretty much what ISO stands for. And uh, both of these relays that I got laid out here today, one is showing the actual operation how it looks inside the relay when it's operating and this is what the, you would see if you pulled a relay out and this relay that I've got here happens to be this relay here that is actually out of a Ford uh, who knows what these relays are pretty much universal but I do know this particular unit is a uh, Ford relay but I wanted to show you guys today the basic operation of a relay Okay, you're going to see uh, several uh, devices or several pins here that I've shown and they pretty much correlate to the pins that you see on uh, how the basic relay is laid out. Okay, I'm going to pull you just a little closer. Okay, there we go. All right, so we have 86 here first, which is this pin here. Okay, and we have 85, which is this pin here. These two pins are actually the, uh, the coil within the relay that pulls the contacts together or pushes them together as this would be. As you'll note, we have 85, 86, 87 alpha, 87, and 30. On pretty much any relay in the industry today, 30 is always going to have, is always going to be battery power. So you're always going to have source voltage on pin 30 okay and it comes over and as you can see it's this is the actual switch and as you can see it's tied into 87 alpha which is not used 87 alpha can be used but in most instances the center pin which is right here is not used 87 alpha all right you could use this if you wanted to say on a fan or something and had a timer on it if you wanted when you shut the engine off and this drops down this thing would kick on say a, an alternate fan to a run for maybe 30 seconds 45 seconds to cool your vehicle down or whatever the case may be or you could use this for some other uh, particular instance but there's a numerous things that you can do with these relays okay so what happens is this coil is 70 roughly 70 Oh, let me say 74 ohms. It might be a little more than that, but this is basically a 74 ohm relay. All right, and what will happen is you can see 85 goes directly to ground. That's pretty much what it is. Now this ground could be through the steering wheel, steering column up to the horn button. So this could actually be a horn button if you really wanted to, and the horn button would be the ground. As a, as a general rule of thumb in the automotive industry, grounds are always the controlling side of a relay. You have to make a ground or put a load on or put a low on it in order to make the relay operate. Okay, you'll note that 86 is actually tied to the ignition. Okay, and that could be anything. That could be uh, you know a coil. It could be your fuel pump. It could be anything. But this comes directly from the ignition and of course it will be it'll have a fuse of some sort in line with this particular line because you know if you have a and same with 80 or same with 30 30 would also have a fuse in line with it uh, for whatever uh, amperage it pulls okay when you activate when you turn the ignition on and this relay is activated it actually swings up it connects these two contacts together which 87 then would go out to the device the device could be uh, your air conditioner it could be your fan uh, it could be um, numerous things your windows uh, power windows power door locks power seats anything could be controlled by this relay uh, pretty much a hundred percent of the stuff in automotive industry today it works with relays unlike it was back in the 40s 50s and 60s where they were actually running high amperage wires through the dash up to the steering column to your ignition switch 
So just to kind of give you an idea, this is what we're doing with this, is just to show you. And this particular drawing over here would show you how these pins are laid out. 87 would be here. So this one here would be your, what I call load. And the load could be to a device of some sort. Okay, 85 again would be your ground. 86 over here would be ignition. 30 would be battery positive. 87A is normally, uh, normally not connected. So that's pretty much the relay on how it lays out. These relays, uh, they're they're very uh, they're very uh, very hardy. They work and work and work. And uh, if you ever have an open or something, if you got a relay that isn't working, you can literally take this hard relay that I got here in front of you. This is the actual relay. And if you take this relay out. You can literally start troubleshooting four separate lines going to different items to see what your issue happens to be with the, uh, is it in the relay, is it in a wire, come to the relay. There's numerous things you can do. You can connect here, you can connect, or, uh, connect here, connect here, and connect here. By simply pulling the relay, this would allow you to use, you can check for a good ground, you can check to make sure the ignition is actually giving you voltage. You can check the load and you can actually power that to the load or you can do a resistance check to see if you've got something broke or to that, uh, to that end. And then a 30, of course, you can check it to see if you actually have a fuse that may be blown or something to that effect that's affecting the power coming to or power that's going to be used on the device. So in a nutshell, these two are one and the same, but this kind of shows you how this uh, relay works. It comes up and down, just like that. Activated, it'll push it up or pull it down, depending on how it's wired. But um, for the most part, that's kind of how the relays are laid out. This is how they operate, and I hope this has been of use to you folks. And uh, it'll give you a good idea where to start the next time if you have something where a relay's not picking up or maybe a relay's stuck that type of deal. So thank you for watching and uh, appreciate it and we will see you again I'm sure.